Hello and welcome back to CQ, our AWS certific certification quiz show live here at Sydney Summit 2019. Really exciting for you this afternoon, guys. We are going to have a look at our brand new to market, just released in March, certified machine learning exam. Speciality, okay? So today, super excited for my special guest for our machine learning exam, especially in a week full of women empowerment, cinematically and on TV. Loving it, guys. Ash, tell us a bit about what you do here at AWS. Hello, everyone. I'm Ashmit, and I'm a solutions architect with Amazon Web Services, looking after my customers in digital natives. Awesome. Ash, what kind of job roles are we looking at for this particular speciality exam, do you think? I th I think in Amazon, we believe that you know machine learning should be put on hands of every developer and data scientist. So there's awesome. a limitless approach. We start with data engineers to data scientists to people who also want to build up their career in data science. Awesome. Ash, are you ready to take us through a few questions sure. that we could potentially see in our machine learning exam? Sure, awesome. absolutely. All right, first one up off the mark. We've got a bit of a SageMaker question going on. OK, go for it. <laughs> Bit of a long one, guys, bear with me. A machine learning team has several large CSV data sets in Amazon S3. Historically, models built with the Amazon SageMaker linear learning algorithm, nailed it, have taken hours to train on similar sized data sets. The team's leaders need to accelerate the training process. Well, what, yes. What can, <laughs> what can a machine learning specialist do to address this concern, Ash? Well, Over to you. That's what I do most of my job in machine learning teams. Um, well, if you look at the options we have, the best way is to identify the options which are not the correct answer. So if you look at an Amazon Kinesis, the option number three, it doesn't fit because it okay. is more a data ingestion service. Fair enough. Um, if you look at Glue, Glue is more about you know ETL transformation service. Doesn't really fit well on training the machine learning model. So we have two options left. And if you look at these options, um, SageMaker pipe mode fits the most um, aspect in terms of accelerating the training process. Now if you look at SageMaker pipe mode, what it does is it lets you accelerate your training process by bootstrapping your learning cycle. It lets awesome. you extract your training data directly without, without downloading it. So when you stream your data set without downloading, it just in, in, impro improves your bandwidth, improves your okay. throughput. And hence, yep. uh, if I look at these options, option number one would be the most fit answer. So you want to go with option one? Option one. So perfect time to check in with those online. Please remember, you can vote along with us. Send us questions in on the chat. We've got John with us here today answering your questions live online. John, how's the poll looking so for this question? So nobody thought it was number one until you were so enthusiastic about number one. <laughs> We have a mix awesome. of everywhere, so wow. uh, what is the correct answer? You ready? Oh, it is Ooh. number one. It Yay. is number one. Mix. Awesome. Cool. Ash, should we move on to question two? Sure. Fantastic. Fraud detection, up next. A company is interested in building a fraud detection model. Currently, the data scientist does not have sufficient amount of information due to the low number of fraud cases. Which method is most likely to detect the greatest number of valid fraud cases? Well, this is definitely a real world problem. If you see that in machine okay. learning, it is very hard to find real time fraud cases, especially if you're doing complex even processing. So um, looking at this inconsistency in the data set, we have yep. to sample the data in such a way so that we can effectively find an outcome. Otherwise, if we don't manage the data set, we would always have an accuracy of every scenario to be a valid scenario and not a fraud scenario. Perfect. So looking at these options yeah, of sampling the data set, I'm looking at the option of option number three, which looks more promising because SMOTE, which is um, synthetic minority oversampling technique. Now this is a very important technique because what it does is it looks at an observations in your data set. Now some are the majority observations which are genuine cases and okay. some are the non-genuine cases which are the fraudulent ones, which are limited in number. So what yep. this technique does is it looks at those minority cases and creates synthetic observations from that. 
That makes with, sense. with the synthetic observations, now you can use machine learning behind the scenes like K-means to actually make that synthetic op operations happening. Yeah. So with the combination of creating synthetic observations over low valued samples, you can effectively manage your data set which has low fraud cases to get a better accuracy. So I would go with option number three. And Let's do you want to give us a quick wrap up of why we're not even going to look at question one, answer one, two, and four? Is that um, all right, Ash? Yeah, sure. So oversampling and undersampling can help you, but it would not it would not give you a context of how and in what okay. way you're managing your data set. And associating a weight can also help, but again, it would not enhance the amount of feature engineering you would want to do for the features yep. you want to get out. So definitely option three is a valid scenario for very specific cases with limited um, complex events. Cool. John, how are we looking on the poll? The poll is going for three and four. Okay. We actually do have a split down the middle. So the right answer, everyone, yes, number, three. number three. Thank you, Ash. All right, moving on to question three. What have we got today? Training models. Okay. Just up my alley. A data scientist is working on optimizing a model during the training process by varying multiple parameters. The data scientist observes that during multiple runs with identical parameters, the loss function coverage it converges to different yet stable values. What should the data scientist do to improve the training process? Okay. Now Whew. In that's just, a big one, Ash. That's a long question. <laughs> now let me just let me just understand the question a bit more. It basically talks about if you look at the keywords, and I'll give you a suggestion to everybody who's going for an exam, just awesome. try to identify the keywords and the aspect or the parameter the question is asking for and Top hop backwards tip. from there. So you look at the loss function. Now the loss function converges to different yet stable values, which means that somehow your data set is converging to a lot of local minimums. Now, what exactly is a loss function somebody might ask, you know? Loss function is basically how accurate your model is able to predict. And okay. the lower the loss function, the better the model predictions are. And hence, the loss function have a direct correlation with the learning rate as well yep. as the batch size, which you would see in the options provided. Now, Okay. If the loss function is having stable values but difference, that means that there's a lot of curvy hap curviness happening in your loss function, especially when you're doing gradient descent technique. Yep. So keeping the batch size same will not help because that is directly going to impact how your loss function converges. So okay. all, all of a sudden, I look at these options and I discard the options where I'm not changing the batch size at all, okay. which means the option one and option three go away. Straight away, go on. Yeah. Now I have option two and four. Now in terms of, uh, because my loss function is converging to different stable values, uh, the option I would choose is to reduce the batch size to optimize the loss function to have less number of local minimas because okay. that's where the key problem is. So I would definitely want to reduce the batch size which keep of, keeps away option number four straight off. <laughs> now. Reducing the batch size and also decreasing the learning rate is important because it will help you um, do the learning process more yep. efficiently and optimize it more effectively. So definitely I would go Fantastic. with option number two to manage oh, oh. my local minima. Would well, you great believe? How you would you that from the question, John. What do the people great say? Great exam tip. Yeah. Would you believe everyone is going for number four? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I would be keen to know why. <laughs> well, that's a reveal. We Question are all two data scientists. Is correct. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Let's move on. Question four. Data oh. engineering. Ash? You have very <laughs> lengthy questions. These are lengthy <laughs> questions. A company is setting up a system to manage data sets in Amazon S3. The company would like to automate the running of transformation jobs and maintaining a catalog of metadata. What solution would require the least amount of setup and maintenance? Okay. Ash. Okay. <laughs> so I'm looking at the options right now and I see a lot of services provided. We have Amazon EMR with a lot. Apache Hive. We have AWS Glue Crawler. We have EMR with Spark. Yep. And then we have Data Pipeline. Now if you look at the crux of the situation, all of these answers would be able to solve your problem. Oh. But you have to look at what the question is actually asking you. And the question is actually expecting you the least amount of time for setup and maintenance, yeah. which is the key part where you have to understand the right answer. So now what you're saying is these are all good solutions, but the tip is in the question. Yes. 
Okay. And the tip is to identify what takes the least amount of time and set up. And out of all these options, I am diverting more towards, uh, going more towards option number two, which is AWS Glue Crawler. So Glue is a serverless okay. ETL service. Now the advantage of using Glue Crawler is that a lot of heavy lifting which you need to do in terms of setting up your jobs will be gone. So you would have more opportunity to okay. fo focus on your job than doing all these processes of building up the pipeline and um, you know integration because it's a serverless service and reduces the time and effort. So, so I'd looking go pretty good. option two. Option two, John, check in on the poll online. Well, uh, Miko no Shib Sh Shinobi wants to go for 2.5 <laughs> if that's allowed. <laughs> <laughs> what but, is 2.5? Uh, popularity <laughs> seems to be number two. Awesome. Cool. So we have a good team here with data engineering skills. Everyone is right. Awesome. Thank you, expert. Cool. All right, guys, let's move on to the last question of our ML. CQ today. Another long one. All right, here we go. Okay. A, a term frequency inverse document frequency matrix okay. using both unigrams and bigrams is built from a text corpus consisting of the following two sentences. Open quotation mark, please call a number below. below. Close quotation mark. <laughs> and please do not call us. Love it. <laughs> Ash. We would never want to say that to our customers. We always want to help you, so always I call us. It. Um, so again. what are the dimensions <laughs> of this matrix? <laughs> okay, so just to set a context, now TF-IDF matrix or term frequency inverse document frequency matrix is used extensively when you are doing data mining or text Too mining much. techniques uh, where you actually want to understand the frequency of the usage of words. And it's mostly used in you know situations like when you're building a search engine where you really okay. want to understand the frequency of words used. Sure. Now, if you look at the two sentences provided by MJ with the so quotation well. <laughs> marks, so if you look at the total words in the sentence, there are two sentences, so that becomes your X part of your matrix. So okay. two becomes, so all of a sudden, option number four goes away. So we have still one, two, and three remaining. Now, if you look at the sentences, how many words do we have? We have, please call the number below. Do not ask. So there are eight unique words. Okay. So there are eight unigra unigrams. And then if you look at the bigrams in the sentence, we have please call, call the number below, the number, please do, do not, not call, call us. Again, we have eight bigrams. So magic number, Ash. Magic number. So eight unigrams plus eight bigrams become becomes 16. So hence, the answer is number one, two comma 16. Brilliant. John, so, call online. Um, Are we we're agreeing? going for a little bit of number one, but number two is the popular one <laughs> so because you said, eight, you said eight so many times, everyone <laughs> number two. You put them off, Ash. And All the right. answer is? And diagrams. Let's <laughs> reveal this last answer. That's number the one. Answer. Ash, thank you so much thank for being you. with me this afternoon. I appreciate it so much. Join us later for another Architecting CQ. Thank you. Thank you.